In this chapter, we will learn how to use KeyShot's color composite utility in combination with our extracted highlight alpha masks from ZBrush and Nald to create edge highlights on our metal material. In this chapter, we're going to quickly enhance our metal material by providing some nice edge highlights, kind of like you see here on the render along the edge, even here. These little highlights are created by that highlight mask that we created in ZBrush and Nald earlier. So let's go ahead and hop right into KeyShot and get started. So we left the model off uh, in this state where we had it previously. And I think that it's going to be better to demonstrate this on this side of the model. So I'm just going to rotate this. However, this is in shadow right now based on the HDRI map. So I'm going to go over here to environment settings. Let's just rotate this around until we get it kind of bright. I think that'll work. And we'll zoom in here nice and close on one of the sections so that we can really illustrate what's going on once we start playing around with these tests. I'm going to go back to our material, open up the metal amulet demo material. And now we're just going to start making our edge highlights. So the first thing I want to do, and just to really easily show you how this works, is to plug something into our color section here. So let's right click in the material section. Let's go down to textures this time and select vertex color. This creates a new node. Let's double click that so it's active. And by here in the default color, I want to show you what this does. Let's press C on our keyboard for the node to activate. Right now it's showing up pure black. You can just change this to whatever color you want and you can see it update on the model. So this one, I'm going to change a vertex color to kind of like a nice white. Click OK. I'm going to right click duplicate. And this one, I'm going to make a little bit darker. So I'm going to press C to activate this one, double clicking it. Default color, let's change this down here to something like this. Pressing OK, I'm going to press C. And now we can see we have this one a little darker and this one a little brighter. So let's add a new utility node. Right click, utilities, and let's choose color composite. You have a bunch of fun little nodes in here. I'm just going to set this up and then I will explain it. So underneath source, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag our brighter color into there. And then under background, I'm going to put our darker color here. And this way we can see this a little bit easier. And then under source alpha, that's where we're going to bring in that one highlight mask that we had a minute ago that I was showing you in, uh, just now. So let's find where we have that saved. For me, I have it in um, this texture maps PSD's location masks. And we can literally just drag and drop this into our scene. So I'm going back to KeyShot. Let's get this active again. And I'm going to use the one that we got from ZBrush. We can just drag that in here. And you know, just so we can compare it later, let's drag the highlights from Nald as well, because I think it'll be a fun comparison. So to illustrate this on top of our object, let's press C on our keyboard. Right now, you can see that the UVs aren't really matching properly. Again, that's because if you guys remember, anytime that you bring in a texture map node, by default, it puts the mapping type on box. Let's click that, go to UV. If you did your UVs and everything correctly, you should see it lining up perfectly on top of our model. And you can see these white areas are gonna become our highlights. The black areas are gonna be the darker area. And we can just compare that with our null map. I'm gonna press C there. I'm going to switch this one to UV. Oops. Here we go. And you can see the Nald one's much more subtle. So let's stick with the ZBrush one. Cool. In fact, I'm just going to delete the Nald one for now. So now we're going to plug this into Source Alpha. Think of this as your alpha mask. And now let's click on Color Composite. And what you should see when we press C is that this top vertex color is blending based on this alpha mask value and mixing with the lower vertex color underneath. So the edge here we have kind of like the white highlights and then the gray here we have the darkness. And I'm actually gonna use this color into our metal. Um, this isn't something I would normally do again uh, with that idea that uh, the metal usually remains the same color, but this is CG and we wanna make it look cool. So let's put it in here, color. And now let's activate the metal node, press C. We'll just give this a second. And it's kind of hard to compare right now, but you will notice that some of the edges are starting to fire up here. See that this is a little bit brighter. 
you can see that this is getting a little bit brighter. Uh, it, it's nice to see how these are taking effect. Now, if you guys really want to kind of see how this is coming through, uh, we could change this vertex color to something absurd like red. And you can see that it's actually working in here, right? So uh, we just need to keep it subtle. That's why I'm kind of keeping it at that white value. So now that we have this in here, I think that we also need to combine this with the reflection. Um, since this area, let's pretend that maybe the amulet was getting banged around. The edges get a little bit shinier than the areas that maybe don't touch something else. In real life, this kind of happens, like when you see the edge of a sword or an axe, etc. So we can combine this into our roughness area. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so you guys can see everything. So let's right click and duplicate our color composite. Bring that down here. Let's right click and duplicate this highlight mask. Bring it here. And this time we're gonna take the highlight mask, toss it into our source alpha again. And I'm going to come over here to where the current roughness is set up, right click. Let's uh, remove that so it's not attached anymore. And now the color composite is going to become our new roughness. So let's drag this over here, choose roughness. Right now it's kind of blowing out, but you can really see the illustrative effect of the pure reflection value based on that white value. And then that darker value, or sorry, not the darker value, uh, one of the values is then getting much more kind of muted out, and not reflective. So let's take this and we're going to take our original texture map that we set up for a reflection value. And we're gonna put that into our source because we wanna retain those original values that we created. And then now, basically the edge highlight section is going to be the original metal uh, reflection that we put in here. I'm not gonna over explain this right now. Let's just kind of get through this. And it's one of those things that as you guys continue to use this in practice, you'll learn as you're doing it. So let's uh, duplicate the texture map, duplicate the color to number, bring that down. We'll connect these and then connect this and toss it into background. So now what we should have is our original reflection setup that was going on. Nothing should look different from what it would be if we only plugged in this section. So now it's time for us to actually make our edge highlights area much more reflective. So underneath color and number, let's press C on here. As you can remember, this is the values that we set for our reflection. Let's crank this one down so that we get more black. Actually, I think this way, cool. The idea, remember, blackness is going to be reflecting a lot, uh, almost like the mirror. So I'm just really pushing these values to make this edge really reflective. So now I'm gonna press C over here. And then now we should be getting a nice hot reflection on all the sides here. Let's zoom in a bit. I'm just gonna minimize this material graph. And you can start to see here how we're getting those nice reflection values. Now what I wanna check is I think that I may need to invert a value. click on material, just to give this a shot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna right click, utilities, color invert. I'm gonna come here to texture map, place that here. And then now we can see what happens when we invert that mask. So I had it correct originally, cause now everything that's in this section, not the edge highlight, that's getting really reflective. So we wanna just get rid of that and then replug this into our source alpha. So this is just a super, super subtle thing that we do, but this is used all the time in CG, especially in um, uh, video game. <laughs> now I can't talk. Uh, especially within video games, things like that, where you're baking down masks frequently, it's nice to get these highlights because a lot of times you can't do it in real time. And then we even do it kind of like in cinematic movies. So now that we have this base metal set up, the next thing that we're gonna be doing is creating dirt. But before we do that, let's go ahead and quickly save our scene again. And if you want, you can also save your material. 
after this is done. I'm going to say right click, save to library, amulet demo. Do you want to override it? Yes. So now we have this nice metal base that has the edge highlight and it's time to go ahead and start adding dirt to this. This tutorial and its downloadable content is available now on my QBrush, Gumroad, and Steam stores which are linked in the description below. Watch the following video to see what is included with your purchase. If you purchase this tutorial, here is a preview of all the bonus content you will receive. Firstly, in ZBrush, I've included three different versions of the amulet. One, my final sculpted version with all the ornamentational details and destruction. Two, just the sculptural details like ornamentation. Three, a version without anything so you could follow along and create your own during the process. Secondly, you will receive the final Keyshot file demonstrated here, which contains all of the texture maps, lighting, and everything that is shown during the tutorial. The thing that I find really useful about this is having access to the material graph and seeing the complex custom materials that are created during the tutorial. This will really help you with understanding how to create your own complex materials in Keyshot. Next, you will receive all of the final PSD files showcased throughout the tutorial, including this gold-painted Mount Fuji design with all of my different layering processes, as well as the custom crest base that is used later for sculpting in ZBrush based off of masks. Also, you'll get all of the final texture maps that are showcased during the tutorial, such as these, which are all tileable. You will also receive all of the original videos in downloaded format at their full high definition resolution. Also, I have included dozens of high quality personal art images such as my Dark Souls 3 High Lord of Walnor fan art, which inspired me to create the amulet tutorial to showcase the techniques I learned and developed during the process. Whether you purchase this tutorial or follow along for free on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for your continued support and I cannot wait to see the epic amulets you create soon.